Okay, so we are working through question one here. And what we have been told is that f of x is equal to this. And in part a, what we need to do is find the derivative. As you can see here, this question is worth one mark, one mark. So we're just going to put down our answer. So we're going to come to our CAS, we're going to go to our calculator, and we're going to begin by defining what f of x is. So I'm going to go f of x, control this button, then I'm going to type in what it is, it's x squared, then this, negative x, that, that is now defined. What I'm now going to do is differentiate, so shift minus x of f of x is that, and now I have this. So that is my answer to a, so I'm gonna come over here now and I'm going to put that in. So let me do that, let's zoom in here. It's going to be f dash of x is equal to 2x minus 2x cubed e negative x squared just like that. Make sure you take care in when you're copying things from your CAS, you don't wanna make any mistakes. Okay, so having now done that, let's look at the examiner's report and see how the state did with this question. So let's just give ourselves a bit more room here and have a look. So as we can see, 94% of the state got the full one mark there. This is what you had to write down as your answer. We have obviously done a bit of factorizing, that's what our CAS has done. This is a, um, just expand it out. But as you can see here, other equivalent forms are acceptable. This question was answered well. Some students appeared to transcribe the output from the technology incorrectly. So be careful when you are transcribing things from your CAS. Um, and these were some occasionally wrong ones that the examiners saw. Others tried to find the derivative by hand. That is a big no-no when you've got your CAS or further engaged with the output from technology and made errors. So overall, we have provided something equivalent to this. So we're in the clear. So let us move on to the next one. Again, as you can see, this is worth one mark again. So let's give it a read. It says, state the nature of the stationary point on the graph of f at the origin. So that means we need to figure out what the nature of the stationary point is at zero, zero. Okay, so there's a few ways we could go about this. The first thing that I would want to do is simply graph this thing. So I know what I'm thinking of in my head. So control doc, add a graph, f of x. That is what it's going to look like. Let's now just zoom in a bit here. Oh, if my cas will let me, give me a sec. Oh, oh. I think it's just having a bit of a bad day. There we go. Uh, here we are. So this is what our graph looks like. And you can see that at the origin, I have a minimum. Uh, a way that we can double check this is using our second derivative test. So what we would do is go menu. We would go calculus. We would go derivative at a point. We want to find the second derivative at the origin. So that's when my X is equal to zero. I hit okay. Now, if this is a minimum, what I should expect is that I'm going to get a value greater than zero. And in fact, I do, I get two. So that therefore proves that it's a minimum. But as you can see here, it's only worth one mark. So all you have to write here is minimum, min e mum. And you will get your mark minimum. Let's now look at the examiner's report and see how people did with this question. So as you can see, 72% of the state got the full one mark. You just needed to write the word minimum. This question was answered well. Some students did not understand what the term nature of the stationary point meant. Common incorrect answers were point of inflection, stationary points, and turning points. Some gave the coordinates of the turning point zero, zero. So some confused people out there, but as soon as you saw nature of the stationary point, you knew that it was either gonna be a max or min or point of inflection. So with that being said, let's now move on to our next one. Here, what we're being asked to do is find the maximum value of the function and the values for which the maximum occurs. So we need to find the maximum value of the function and the values of x for which it occurs. So what we're going to do here is to find where my maximum occurs, I'm going to be finding all my stationary points. So I'm going to solve, whoops, if I can spell, I'm going to solve f dash of x when that is equal to zero, and I'm solving that for my x values. That is what I'm going to do, and that's going to tell me where my maximums are going to occur. So I come over here, and I go solve, then I put a bracket, and then I come up here, and I put this, 
and I'm going to solve that when it's equal to zero and I'm solving it for my x values. And what I'm going to get out is x is equal to negative one or x is equal to zero and x is equal to one. Now remember, these are the x values for my stationary points, not just my maximum. x equals zero, we already know that that is a minimum. So if we come and look at our graph, that x equals zero is a minimum, but x equals negative one and x equals one are my maximum values. Uh, another way you can double check this is you could go menu, you could go calculus, and you could say, what is the function maximum? And that will bring that up. You're then going to type in f of x, uh, comma x, and it will just give you where the maximum occurs, x equals negative one or x equals one. So this will ensure you don't make the mistake of writing x equals zero there. So now we would come over here and we would write that my maximum, my max occurs at x is equal to negative one or x is equal to one. Now remember, we also need to figure out what my maximum value is. What is my max value? The way that we're going to find that is simply by substituting in these x values here. So if I go f of, x, f of one, I'm going to get that. And of course I could do it this way as well. And I'm going to get the same answer. So it's one over e. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say that when I put this in, I get that out. And that right there is going to be my answer. It's two marks there. So let's see what the examiner's report says. So as you can see, 67% of the state got the full two marks. What we have here, so solve the derivative when it's equal to zero for x, that's what we said there. X is going to be equal to negative one or X equals equal to one. That's what we said there. And my maximum value is that. That is also what we said. Uh, some students included X is equal to zero or only gave one answer for X. So we know why people made that mistake. They probably did this right here and then they saw these three values and didn't consider the fact that this is a minimum. Uh, it also says some student gave the approximate answer for the maximum value an exact answer was required. So why is it that some people accidentally put in the approximate? I think what they probably did is they were looking at the graph and they said, well, I want to find where my maximums occur. So they probably did this, then they went this and this. Well, there's one maximum, negative one, 0 0.368. And then they went menu, analyze, maximum, there to there. And as you can see, if you're doing it in this graph section, you're going to get the correct X values, but you're going to get an approximate value for that. And we didn't want the approximate, we wanted the exact, which is that. Okay, let's keep on moving now. The next thing that we have to do is find the values of D, which is an element of all real numbers, for which F of X plus D is always negative. All right, so how are we going to do this? I would come and look at my graph here. And if it's always going to be negative, what I want to do is shift this below my X axis. Well, if I know that my Y value is this, and remember the exact value of that is one over E, what we're going to do is simply subtract that. So let me show you what I mean. Let's bring this up. I'm going to go F of X minus this value right here, which we know is one over this, that, I hit that and I'm going to get that. So as you can see there, I am below my X axis. Now here's something very important. I'm actually touching my X axis at that point. So if I go menu, analyze graph zero, whoa, whoopsie daisy. You can see that I'm touching it there. And remember, it always is going to be negative. I can't have a point which is zero. So that means it's going to have to be less than negative one over E. So I'm going to come over here now and I'm going to say that my D has to be less than negative one over E. And that is going to be my answer. Uh, another way we could express this, so you would only write one of them, but if you wanted to express it another way, you could say that it's negative infinity to negative one on E that would also be an acceptable way to write your answer. Let's come and now look at the examiner's report and you can see that 35% of the state got this. So it was poorly done. Only 35% of the state got it. There is our answer right there. That is what we wrote here. And as you can see, it says this question was not answered well. Common incorrect answers were D is equal to negative one on E or D is less than or equal to. So it can't be equal to because then it would be including that zero. And this one is just, just wrong. Uh, the rest is just wrong. Uh, some students wrote this. And as you can see, the reason why this is wrong is because they didn't put their negative infinity first. So that is unfortunate. Okay, let's keep on moving now. The next thing we need to do is find the equation of the tangent to the graph at f, 
uh, find the equation of the tangent to the graph of f at x is equal to negative 1. So let's come here. Now we actually know what this is already. We've already determined the fact that at x is equal to negative 1, we have a derivative of 0, which means it's simply going to be a horizontal line through this point. If you wanted to confirm this fact, you would simply go menu, menu, calculus, we're finding the derivative at a point, the point is negative 1, and yes, first derivative, we now hit OK, and it's for f of x, as you can see, it is 0. So that means um, it's just going to be a horizontal line. It's just going to be a horizontal line, and if we were to just draw it in, what it's going to be is 1 over, whoops, that's the wrong one, uh, 1 over this. Hit that. Okay, so now when I hit enter, what I'm going to get is just a straight line. So enter there. Oops. Enter. And as you can see, it's just a horizontal line, which is touching at that point right there. So that means as we come over here, what my answer is going to be is simply this, 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 this. It's only one mark, so I just need that. No working required. If we come now and look at our examiner's report, you can see that 79% of the state got this correct. And that is what we wrote right there. This question was answered well, an equation was required. Okay, let's keep on moving now. What we have to do here is find the area enclosed by the graph of f and the tangent to the graph of f at x is x equals negative 1, correct to four decimal places. So we need to find the area enclosed by the graph of f and the tangent to the graph of f at x x equals negative 1. So we have just found what that uh, tangent is going to be at x equals negative 1. We now need to find the area enclosed by this tangent and the graph. So it's obviously referring to this region right here. So I'm going to go menu, I'm going to go analyze graph, and I'm going to go bounded area. I then am going to go from here to here. And as you can see, my answer is going to be 0 0.357. The question says we need it to four decimal places. So I'm going to go menu, I'm going to go settings, and I'm going to change it just to a higher float so I can get the required number. Now, let's put this over here for the time being and just give this question another read. As you can see, it says I have it's uh, worth two marks. So I can't simply write down what my answer is going to be. I'm going to have to provide a line of working. So what I'm going to do is put my integral sign. I'm going from, my boundaries are negative one to one. So let me put that in, one, negative one. I then am going to take the tangent and subtract it from the function and d of x. And now I can say that that is going to be equal to zero point three five six eight and that is enough to get my two marks i've got some working and i've got what my answer is going to be let's now look at the examiner's report and see what they have written for us so if we come here they have provided a bit more uh, working here so as you can see it says area of the rectangle subtract the area of the function uh, you could either write this or this this is what we have written uh, the only difference is that we wrote f of x instead of writing it out like that. Uh, and then you can see here the area is 0 0.3568, which is what we wrote as well. And that's correct for decimal places. The most, most students were able to subtract f from their tangent. Common incorrect methods were the following. So what's wrong with this? You have the wrong boundary. Uh, what's wrong with this? You're not subtracting the tangent from the function. And what's wrong with this? You've gotten the order the wrong way around. So don't make those mistakes. Let's now move on to our last question here, which says, let M with the coordinates MN be a point on the graph of F where my M is an element of zero to one inclusive. Find the minimum distance between M, so the point M and the point zero E. The value of M for which this occurs and the value of M for which this occurs correct to three decimals. So we need to find the minimum distance between M and this point and the value of M for which this occurs. So if we can just visualize this for a moment, uh, my M is going to be a point between zero and E, uh, zero and one on this blue graph here. And I need to find the minimum distance from that to zero E. So zero E is just going to be a point on my Y axis somewhere here. So this is going to require us to use the distance formula. So I know that my distance is going to be equal to the square root 
of, and now I just minus my x values from each other. So it's going to be 0 minus m, 0 minus m. I square that, then I plus the difference in my y's, e minus n, e minus n, and then I square that. Now I need to find the minimum distance. So I know that this is going to be an optimization question and optimization questions require us to differentiate because we're trying to find the value of m for which this occurs. I want to differentiate with regard with respect to m, which means I have to get rid of this n. I only want things in terms of m. The way I'm going to get rid of it is by simply writing that n as f of m because that is what it is. And now I no longer am dealing with that n, I have it in terms of m. Once I've done that, I can now figure out what d of x, oh sorry, not x, of m, d dash of m is going to be. I can now figure that out. Okay, so, and remember, actually let me write this, uh, what we're going to do here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve d, so the derivative of that, when it is equal to zero, and I'm going to solve that for m. That is what I'm going to do. So let's now come to our CAS and just write down what we're doing here. So let's bring this over here for a moment so I can have a look. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to begin by just defining d of m. So d of m, control this, is going to be zero minus m squared uh, plus, then I'm gonna put this right here, minus f, f is already defined of m squared. Oh, don't make a mistake like that. Make sure it looks like this, that's better. Okay, zero, that looks good. Just look over it, make sure it's all correct. Let's hit enter there. So that now is defined. Uh, what we could do now is we could actually graph this. Uh, actually, before we graph it, let's just kind of go through what we're going to do now. I'm now going to solve for where the derivative, so I'm gonna go shift minus, I'm differentiating with respect to m of d of m, I am going to set that equal to zero and solve it for m. That is what I'm going to do. Let me close off that bracket. Have I got too many brackets? I do, no? There we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've been given three points here. And this is where some people might get a bit lost of like, oh, well, which of these three points is, is it going to be? Well, I know that I'm dealing with this restriction between zero and one uh, inclusive. So I definitely know it's not going to be uh, this one right here, but you might be thinking, well, how can I tell apart these two? One way you could go about this is by simply graphing what my distance is, because we've created a function for it. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go add page, uh, I'm gonna add a graph. Now I'm gonna put in D, and as you can see, it's bold, and I'm just gonna do it in terms of X, because that's what my graph knows what to do with it. And as you can see, this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. So as you can see, I have a stationary point here, here, and here. Where I'm going to get a minimum is here. So my zero would not be a minimum distance. This is going to correspond to a minimum distance. To find out what this is going to be, well, I already know what it's going to be. It's going to be 0 0.783. That is what it's going to be. But if I just want to double check that, I can go menu, analyze graph. Uh, this is going to be a minimum from here to here. There, I've got both of my answers. So I've got this, which is going to be my m value, which corresponds to my minimum distance, which is 2.5114. So if you wanted to do that simply in this section, the next thing you would do is say, well, what is d of, and put in this right here. You'd put that in, and then you would solve it, and you'd get your answer, 2.51137. And just like that, you would have your answer. So let's now kind of formalize all of this by putting it down. So uh, let's come over here now, and what are we going to write? All right, so what are we going to write here? What I'm going to say, so I'm just trying to find my pen. What we're going to say here is I've solved that for this, for m, and my m is going to be equal to 0 0.783. That is what we found here. 
and that's correct to three decimal places. I then substitute that into my distance uh, equation that I've created, which is going to be, I'm subbing that in, and there's going to be some dots there, and that is going to be equal to 2.511, which is what we have over here. And that's correct to three decimals. And that would be our working out. So we've given the value of m for which it occurs, that is here, and we've found the minimum distance, which is there. And I think that's all we have to do. Let's now look at the examiner's report and kind of compare the pair. All right, so as you can see, 24% of the state got the full three marks here. So not necessarily the best question ever done in the world. Uh, you can see this right here is what we wrote. So using that distance formula. Then it says solve for the derivative with respect to m when it is equal to zero for m. And then what you can see is we've really done this part here. So m is equal to 0 0.783, that's correct to three decimals. Then they did this, which is equal to 2.511. So many students were able to use the distance formula. Some found m, but not the distance. Some gave their answers correct to two decimals. That would be so painful if you did all that hard work, but then didn't give your answer correct to the correct decimals. So we have used this method right here to get our answer. So as you can see, it says all using that way, but I think that is just the straightforward way to do it. Hopefully this has been helpful to you uh, going through question one of exam two of the 2019 math methods exam. With that, I will say goodbye and see you in the next video.